uh, we're going to continue with that. So now we are going to make a detective chart. So if we're going to be detectives, there's some like four key things that we probably should be paying very close attention to. So what are the, and I need you to write this in your math journal so you have it as you're doing your detective work. So what are some of the four, the four most important things we should be looking at when we're analyzing our data because we're going to have to make sure we get it to the correct graph. What would be the four most important things we need to look at? Matthew. The title is pretty important. I'm going to put title up here, but I want to put four things underneath there. What should that be? The scale. The scale. Scale is important. Why do you think that's important, Rita? Because if, if like, the scale wasn't there, you wouldn't know, like, the number, like, what the, the information, like, what number they use. Scale is extremely important, right? So if you're trying to make a bar graph with your data, you can't if you don't have that scale, right? You're kind of, hey, I can't go anywhere. I'm stuck. Excellent observation. Izzy, what else do you think is very important? The key. Why would the key be important? So you know how much to count by. You know how much. So if it was a pictograph, then you would need to know, like, that. remember that little game we played in class last week with the ice creams, and we said one ice cream would equal three? And so we knew that when we looked at our graph, we needed to skip count by three. So exactly, the key is very important. What would be another one? Jonathan. Data. Oh, yeah. We can't go anywhere in a graph without this, can we? That's a pretty important part of it. It's like a teacher without students. We couldn't do that, could we? Okay. There's also, you also um, need, um, what else do we need, Matthew? You need your survey. We need your survey, your survey so you know how much, um, well, okay, I agree the survey is important, but would that not be our data? So once you've done your survey, you put it in, that would be all your data? Yeah. So that's kind of the same thing, but that's great thinking. I agree with you. What else do you think that we would need? What else do we need to look at? What's the whole thing that we're going to be looking at, matching it to? Graph. The graph, the type of graph, and we've talked about line graph, circle graph, and bar graph. So we need to really look at our graph. So here's the four things that I really want you to focus on. Now, I want to ask you a question. I know we have tons of graphs in mathematics, and we have them in social studies, and we have them in English and science, but do you ever see them once you walk out of my classroom? You never see graphs anywhere? Well, sometimes they never used anywhere? You will sometimes see them on grocery stores, like They'll be at, or the, when we are having fundraisers, they'll have a, a thermometer. Oh. And, the, and, the, and uh, the, more, the more money we raise, the higher the, th the higher the thermometer. Awesome connection. I love it. Who else has, who else can tell me where do you see graphs outside of this school? What is, what is the purpose of having a graph? If they look cute? Is there even a purpose for them? What is that purpose? Andrew. Uh, pur the purpose of graphs is for like, Reading, like what I said early, previously about the profits are going high and low, or, um, or like it could be the amount of money you want to spend, or if you want to label like how many want to do this, how many want to do that. So would it be easier for me to read if I just looked at that graph real quick? No, you, you probably want to study it. I would want to study it, you think? Yes, we could read it. Okay. So it's it's to represent the, the survey or the data that you've collected. What else? What is the purpose of, of the of the graph? Yes. To show people what you got, like on science fair, to show people what you got if you didn't answer. I love it. She said when she did science fair, so did you do a graph when you did your science fair project? Okay, so you had a hypothesis, you had to do an experiment, and maybe you used a graph to show your data. Excellent. Where else might you use it? Um, I know where I'm not in the classroom, though. It's in the classroom? There. On the problem solving that little house drawing. Yes, I do have one up there. That's right. How many of you watch the weather? Do you ever see any graphs there on the weather or on the news? For like the, the, the allergy count. Okay, the allergy count. Yes, Emma. For those of us who live in Austin, Texas, that allergy count is pretty important, isn't it? 
Okay, what else? Where else we might see it outside of the classroom? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, maybe at Walmart, maybe at a store, yes. For their for our reading levels? For your reading levels in school, that's correct. Yes. Um if you were like sometimes you'll see them like outside of office buildings to see to tell you how like um like how the business is running and um like for like if you're like a lawyer, sometimes they'll have like graphs out outside of their door sometimes okay. to tell you how many clients they want and how many they want. Oh, so that's a quick, easy way as you're driving through to see, hey, we're a successful business, and they use the graph to show you that information. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to move on, and we know that we have our little box. This is going to help guide us when we are doing our detective activity. Does everybody have this copy into their math journal? Yes. Okay, so everybody needs to have this. And what I'm going to do is we are, I'm going to hand out these here in just a minute. But first thing I want to do is model with you what I would do. So these are going to be your actual job. This is going to be your job. So Mrs. Ruiz is going to pretend that she is a detective and she has been sent out to analyze data and match it up to the correct graph. Which, isn't that our guiding question for the day? Yes. The whole purpose of our lesson is to what? Analyze, Analyze data. this data and be able to match it to the correct graph. So here we go. So my question, my problem here says a school is registering students for different activities. And the tally chart shows the number of students who have registered for each activity in the last three hours. So I see my title is activity registration, and I notice my title matches on all the graphs down below. I see y'all can see it. And they've used tally marks. And we talked about that before, right, when we were taking surveys, that we can use tally marks. So they have four activities here, soccer, volleyball, basketball, softball. So I'm looking at scale because we all made our little chart that's going to help us. So my scale... And let's see, over here my scale is counting by twos. Over here it's different. They don't have a scale on this, this particular one. They have a key. And every little dot represents what? Two. 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 So that's pretty important for me to pay attention to, right? Then this down here is a chart with information. And here's a bar graph, and it's counting by twos. So I've looked at my key. I've looked at my scale. I'm looking at my graph. I have a line graph. I have a bar graph. I don't have a circle graph on this one, but some of the ones in your package will. So now I need to use my detective skills and see if I can figure out which graph this information is correctly represented in. So I'm looking at soccer, and I say soccer has how many tally marks, boys and girls? Eight. Eight. Awesome. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to look at this one. And soccer, eight. Is that correct? Okay, well, let's look over here. Soccer, should I count by one? No, no two. No, by two. Or you can see how many that she So, two, four, six, eight. So, is this correct? Yes. yes. How about down here? Yes. yes. And how about here? Yes. yes. So, soccer looks good, so I can move on, right? Let's look at the next activity, volleyball. How many tally marks are in there? Yes. So let's find volleyball and go up here to my line graph. What does it say? Wow. Whoa. Is that correct? No. Whoa. Good thing I'm looking at that data. So I think that this pers this graph must not be the graph that I'm looking for because already I'm finding a mistake, right? Let's look at the next one. Let's count. Count with me. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Is that correct? No. Yes. No. Yes. Let's look back. Okay. It's okay because sometimes we say we're not sure. So let's look back in our data. How much should we have up here? Ten. Ten. How much should we have here? Ten. Okay. So are we good? Yes. Awesome. Let's go to the next one. So now I'm looking down here and I'm saying volleyball. Ten. Is that correct? Yes. So I'm good there too. And how about here? Ten. Okay. So I'm going to continue on my detective uh, mission. Yeah, my job, my mission, my detective mission. So next I'm looking at basketball. How many tally marks, boys and girls? Four. 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 So let's see. Basketball, I look across the bottom. How many are there? 